Welcome to Inside Design with Kandrak and Cole, hosted by two nationally published Atlanta interior designers, Joanne Kandrak and Kelly Cole. These energetic women are also world travelers, charity givers, and bloggers with a wealth of information to share and stories to tell about the interior design world. Okay, now just a warning, this is going to be fun and not too serious. After all, they still do have an interior design business running at full speed. Hey everybody, thanks for tuning in. This is episode 141 of Inside Design with Kandrak and Cole. And today we are talking about how we have navigated design post-pandemic. So really, it's truly amazing that we are quickly approaching the three-year mark since the world shut down with COVID. And as we all know, the effects of the pandemic have affected product inventory and price, labor efficiencies, and shipping timelines more than we really could have ever imagined. I don't think any industry has been affected more than the entire interior design industry from the supply and demand conditions created by the pandemic. It's been crazy, right? Yes. Crazy. We never could have imagined So, like the recession in 2008, how designers navigate the hurdles presented by the pandemic will determine if we thrive or not. You know, we were very proud to come out of that recession. Yes. (laughs) And now we're proud to come out of the pandemic. So, we feel like we've done a really good job of, you know, keeping our projects moving and our clients happy over the last two and a half years. And so, we were talking about it and we thought we'd share some of our strategies and how we kind of sur- have survived it thus far. Yes. And yeah. so that word pivot, which nobody yeah. likes to say, but <laughs> but before we get going, we wanted to um, share that this episode is sponsored by Wexel Art. The beauty of the Wexel Art Frame concept lies in the floating acrylic panel that makes art easy to install with magnets or metal standouts. Wexel allows you to frame your art or memorabilia using single or double paneled acrylic for a look that is just as pretty, if not more so, than your typical custom framing. We reached out to Wexel to create a custom frame for a four foot by six foot Apple Think Different poster that is a collector's item. Especially great for kids' art, we rely on Wexel for a lot of projects. Check them out at wexelart.com. I have this art that I picked up in Florence from this this Iranian artist in, at my lake house. And everybody comments on it, but they're not commenting on the art that I love so much. They're like, these frames, they're so awesome. I'm like, yeah. yep, Wexel Art, I'll send you the website. Yep, And they have some really nice tabletop ones, too. And they also are doing an art collection, which oh, is very nice. Right. Yeah, and I forget about yeah. that because yes. it's not just framing. They have some great art now. W-E-X-E-L art.com. Yeah. Okay. All right. So let's dive into what we've accomplished in the last two and a half years. And I was thinking about it. And I think one thing that we're really, really good about, and we're not afraid to talk about the down in the dirty is how we converse with our clients from the very, very beginning. Yes, you have to, you know, we've always been you know, customer service and communication is probably one of the things that people say they really like about us. And Mm -hmm. I think in any business, if you're communicating, I think that gives people a sense of, okay, you care about what you're telling me, you're, you're keeping me abreast of what's going on. And having the difficult, even if we have to say, you know what, this is going to take nine months. Yeah. Um, And sometimes maybe people are afraid to say that. But if someone has the expectation, then you, you are you know, you're ahead of the game. Yeah. And we have lost a couple jobs because people's mm-hmm. expectations were just unrealistic. And, wa- and we're not going to jump into that hot water. Yeah. I mean, we're going to be super duper transparent from the very beginning about not only the lead times that have been atrocious, but that the shipping costs are out of control. Yep. And there's also surcharges on top of and you know, when you buy from retail, and you don't you don't know these things, because they're all baked into the cost, right? Right. But for us as designers, these are things these are line items in our procurement that we have to navigate. Yeah. Do we absorb them? Do we suck it up? Do we pass along, but don't mark it up? You know, like, how, how do we do all that? So and the other thing too is, and I'll just say, whenever I've bought something, because I'm in a rush, because I'm having a party or something, mm-hmm. and I want something there. Mm-hmm. It ends up not being the thing that I like in the end because I just rush to get it there. So to wait, you know, we're not, you know, that's not the way we do it. That's not the way we we do it. And people want things quickly and fast. But in the end, if you really wait for the piece that you want, it'll be worth it. And it's just furniture. Just wait. Yeah. So we've been really upfront with our clients. We have been really, we get a lot of calls from clients that are just starting out with, say, a new build or a big, huge renovation. 
and they kind of want to test the waters with us and, and they'll call and say, you know, like, when should I call you? And, you know, how, when should you guys jump into the project? And, and we always say, right this minute, because you need us way before you think you're going to need us because our timeline has backed up so far, not only for our availability, but for products. So that's a big thing is, is along with all that transparency. And then really how we update our clients. I don't, I, I'm assuming that that other designers do this, but I think we're we're really good about it. Yeah. So we, we have a we have a, we have a Monday meeting. Yep. Every week. Yeah. We have expedite reports. So Lisa and Lynn in our office, they're the ones who are updating this and keeping it. So when we sit down, we have items that are we're still waiting on that are highlighted, and then we go, okay. So what did so and so? When did they say this would ship? So we're we are we know what's happening every minute. I could tell you right now on the. 12 or 15 projects we have going around right now I could go to it and tell you what's what's in what's not and when it's coming in and that's really good information that meeting takes us an hour to an hour and a half to get through everything and then based on that that's when we, we communicate to the clients if there's something that we might have to change or something that's been um, back ordered even longer so so if you can imagine all these orders are going out to to all of these manufacturers across the board. Imagine an entire house, everything that has to go into that house, right? Lamps, rugs, furniture, wallpaper, the lighting, the whole nine yards. And Lisa and Lynn manage all the acknowledgements that come in. So every manufacturer sends an acknowledgement. Some don't. They have to be chased down, mm -hmm. which is aggravating, but it's part of their job, and they do it really well. The acknowledgements come in saying estimated ship time, you know, we have your order, whatnot, and then that goes into... Our, we use studio. We use Studio Designer as our design software. Lisa exports it into Excel for her for her expedite reports. And then you know we might we might. This is what happens all the time: is we select things that are in stock. We present to the client. We we urge them for quick decisions, quick turnaround, and because you know we tell them again that transparency that these items could disappear tomorrow. We get the acknowledgement back and the. Yeah, 40 coffee tables that we're in are now gone. And that has so, happened so, so many, many times. times. I mean, so many times. So if you think about, you know, if we're buying a table from Bernhardt, well, all designers across the entire country are buying from Bernhardt. So really having 40 or 50 in stock is really no big deal. So we may have to reselect on the spot, depending on, you know, sometimes we'll, it'll, it'll say out of stock, uh, you know, new inventory coming in nine months. Yeah. So we have to reselect which sometimes is a huge hassle if that one was very, very, very particularly chosen. So, but I, I think those team meetings and, and being on board and being able to, especially for our new construction, yeah. our, you know, the builders and the electric, they want to know, like, where are you? You know, we're and saying, we, where are you? We're, and yeah. they're saying, well, where are you? <laughs> we, we never want to be the ones to be holding up the process. And yeah. generally, we never are. Yeah. We're actually like kind of, you know, push, you know, we poke a lot. We poke them. Like, what? <laughs> so what's going on now? But it's so yeah. funny. Last November, mm -hmm. we received a call from a, a young lady who was having a house built that thought would be done by May. Yes. And she was very smart and contacted us ahead of time because she knew there were long lead times for furniture. We made all the selections. We um, placed all the orders. And would you say we placed the orders by? It was like in March. Place the orders in March. Yeah, because we she had hired us. Okay, we, and and then yeah. we um, was that long ago. Yeah. yeah, so here we are now in September, and most of the items are in, but there are still quite a few. Now, as you can see, we're in September. She still hasn't moved in. Um, the, the windows were taking forever. They just had it drywall, but now there's some trim issues. So she probably won't be moving in until December. Mm -hmm. But. This will probably be one of the first installs that we do from beginning to end because yeah. everything will be in. Yep. But even if she had moved in in May, she would have had the majority of her things. So when you think about it, six months is not that. I think that's about what it is. And that's pre that's really quick, actually. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, six months is quick. Quick turnaround. Yeah. So in addition to our our Monday team meetings and how we're communicating with clients. The other thing that has really, really benefited us is our vendor relationships. We have such close relationships with our manufacturers. We have our reps on speed dial. We have their cell phone numbers. And we were just 
we're partners in crime. Yeah. We have to be. Yeah. And so every single decision we make, we're constantly calling them, okay, what's, what frames are in stock right now? Because things change weekly. Yeah. What, what frames, you know, but I really want this one. What, what's, you know, what am I looking at if I don't, you know, do the in-stock frames? And, okay, I need, a, I need a dark blue performance velvet, you know, let's talk, you know, what's in stock. So it's just a constant conversation. Sometimes we can wait on the custom stuff, yeah. but, well, but even, ha- the ready, the, even the stuff that's ready is taking yeah. 30 weeks. Just so of the shipping. Yeah. But what's interesting too is let's just say, for example, I think Kelly, you selected a fabric that was in stock when you selected it, mm-hmm. came back, it wasn't available. This was for a multifamily yeah. project that we couldn't wait mm-hmm. that long for the fabric to come in. And then you get a little nervous because if the fabric isn't coming in for a mm-hmm. couple months and then something changes where it gets delayed again, then you're really in trouble. So mm-hmm. the rep went through and said, here's a really good alternative. If you want to try this, we have plenty of stock in that. Yep. So that helps. Yep. So we've also had to get kind of loud at times. I mean, there's been some circumstances where we kind of had to flex some muscle, but hey, got to do what you got to do. Um, and we've really been investigating quick ship opportunities, you know, Quick ship really became a joke for a long time, yeah. but now it now it's kind of coming back. And quick ship isn't the you know week to two week turnaround that it once was. But hey, if somebody says eight to ten weeks now, we're like so excited. Mm-hmm. So we've kind of dove into a few, yeah. just a few of those really getting and to know those. Some of those quick ships though come with some limitations. Yes. Um, there are married fabrics, which means that sofa will only come in these certain fabrics. Mm-hmm. And, and they're usually neutrals, which is fine. Mm-hmm. Uh, but you have to be aware of that. And then the quality, the cushions might be a little bit different. So mm-hmm. we, we are just, you know, we have to go on a case-by-case basis and decide what will work best. But knowing all this information, like we mm-hmm. have to keep up with it because yeah. um, it's changing all the time. And then weird things happened, like, you know, Sombrella fabrics, for example, our go-to leader in the industry for performance fabrics really did not navigate the COVID uh, world well. They had they had a lot of issues just with their factories and producing and inventories. And we had a lot of our reps come to us and say, pull all your Sombrella fabrics and yeah. don't even source them. Yeah, I just read something that they're getting back on track. So that's, that's great. It's taken them, taken great. them a little while. but I, I would yeah. never want to give up yeah. on them ever. But yeah. that was, you know, we had to pivot and we started using a lot of inside out and some revolution fabrics, mm-hmm. which happened in a lot of a lot of things. You know, we started to look for Made in America a whole lot more yep. than we ever did before. Yep. So um, we also, well, we had a rep say, you know, no motorization, don't, yep. you know, stay away parts. from it if you can, yeah. you know, the chips and the parts for some of that. For, yeah. And mm-hmm. then what we have done a lot of is reupholstery. Yes. Um, and we, you know, we would do that before if the piece was you know, of, of good quality, if the lines and the design, you know, was still current, and people would say, oh, I love the sofa, it's just the fabric's gotten whatever. Mm-hmm. So if, if somebody really loves a piece, and they want to keep it, we will always reupholster it. Sometimes the pricing is about the same. Yeah. But or more, if you love it, um, and reupholster it, or sometimes just, just a few things that you want to freshen up, Rather than buying new, yeah, we've done a lot of yeah. reupholstery. But then what happened was our reupholsterer that we love so much got so backed up. They were at 14 to 18 weeks themselves. So then we had to go find a second upholsterer. So it's really also been a lesson in don't ever have your eggs all in one basket. You know, you can't have one upholsterer, one framer, one installer, one. You just yeah. can't anymore. So yeah. that was that was a lesson learned. The other thing that we had to, we got kind of creative about was leaning in on retail stores if we needed to. Mm -hmm. Uh, Hey, you know, at this point, it's like who has stock, right? And so recently we finished a job at a multifamily and we had kind of a corner that was a little blank. And I was like, oh, I really need a bench like really quickly. And I found one at Crate and Barrel that was absolutely perfect. And it was in stock. I was so excited. I go to order it. And they're six weeks out in their delivery time for their, you know, just getting stuff to people's houses. 
and I was under the gun for a, a visit from a VP. So I called the store. I'm like, do you have this in your store? The lady said no. She goes, but we do get deliveries every Thursday from the factory. So if you, we can order it and you can pick it up here. I was like, oh, heck yes. So they have a curbside, you know, thing. I call ahead. I pull up. I didn't even get out of my car. I popped my trunk. The guy put it in and I drove off to the property and dropped it off. And they were so happy. I never knew you could do that. I always just thought that if the store didn't have something in stock, then you were out of luck. You know, it was it was this is one of those things where you have to get creative, right? So getting creative has been a big thing. What else have we done? So we have done a lot of commissioned art. Yeah. You know, we do buy from, you know, art vendors, but they're still they're at the six to eight weeks. So if we want to finish up a project and, you know, we always love to do um, original art, but even if there is a piece that is not available right away, there's so many other options. And I think people appreciate it. Uh, original art and one of those things that right you're not waiting on a uh, a container for it to come over and you don't I don't think that the average person thinks of commissioning art you really don't know not all artists do it but if you just ask the artist or the gallery you'll be surprised it's Mm -hmm. and and generally we have found that the lead time is not terrible no Uh, somebody but I love this piece but the colors are not quite right okay let's look or I love this piece I want it a lot bigger yeah it's, that that's yeah. usually what happens, yeah. or we need a pair. A lot of yeah. times, we need a pair of something, and yeah, and yeah. that and that doesn't work. But I think um, some of the things that we've done on the business side of things, after we were probably into it about six months, and even though we were preparing people with lead times, or whatever, we did an addendum to our contract. Yes, that said, it may not be one install anymore. You know, we will do our best to accommodate. You know, the install time. But there's going to be, there may be issues. Yeah, Just that's... So people know. Yeah. Um, and going back one thing to um, just getting creative and, and other things we did, I was thinking about, we remember when we, we changed shipping companies? Yes. We, for a million years, we have used Sunbelt because of our location in the Southeast. Steady Eddie's just great. Well, they, I, I don't know if they were the number one shipper or whatever, but their lead times were so atrocious. They were just, they were so backed up. They didn't have drivers. They didn't, the turnover was really hard. And they had trucks sitting there with tons of product that they couldn't get it going. And I remember even Lisa talking to the, talking to the girl there and her apologizing and saying, we just can't, we just can't get this stuff moved. So we went through and we talked to some other manufacturers. Who do you use? And we ended up changing the shipping company, which a lot of people did. And but it's gotten so much better. But you know, we changed thing, to you, what we yeah. changed to Brooks. Brooks, yeah. I mean, you just can't just sit back and just let things just keep happening to you. You sometimes have to just like, all right, how do we change this? What do we need to do? Yeah, and and that was another that goes back to our relationships with our with our reps and our manufacturers to call them and say, hey guys, like. We've always used Sunbelt because of our location, but do you have a preferred shipper? Or, you know, who are you guys using? You're coming from Ohio or you're coming yeah. from California. You know, should we switch? And and they had great feedback for us. Yeah. And so we, we worked it all out. Yeah. Yep. And then I was thinking the other thing was we really kind of dove into, well, we had to expand our we we thought our resource list, our manufacturer rep list, was huge, right? We're like, oh yeah, we've we we've curated everybody. this over seventeen years, but we had to stretch it even farther because we were having to find, and we still are having to find a table here and a lamp here and a couch here. I mean, it's crazy, right? Yeah, yeah. So um, remember, like Murphy's Kitchen. So this was interesting. So we had planned on doing your typical cabinets in a kitchen, a very large kitchen. And full gut and run out. Yeah. And so we decided we wanted something a little more modern. At the time, kitchen cabinet companies were really, really backed up. And so we decided to go with a laminate, which when sometimes if, if you're not used to what the laminates look like today, you would not believe how beautiful this mm-hmm. kitchen is. Um, and so it was just using a completely different product that was readily available that ended up you know, exceeding our expectations. So, you know, we, we, we went out on a limb on that one. It's about to be featured in a, in a magazine in the spring or in the January of 2023. 
It's probably one of our most proud moments. I mean, talk about pivoting. I know everybody hates that word, but boy, did we. I mean, and really what happened now that I think about it is the contractor that we were using, his cabinet guy got sick. Remember, it wasn't COVID, but he got sick and they didn't have, like he was their go-to guy and we, it was holding up the whole job and we had to scramble. And we had used a company in Atlanta that does a lot of custom leasing desks for us. And we went to them and said, like, this is huge, but do you do this kind of cabinetry? And and they were like, all day long. Yeah. So. And what was kind of neat, too, they were able to put some, a different kind of laminate, texture laminate inside the oh, cabinet. Oh, yes. Which, it's just in the little, it didn't cost any more. Yeah. Uh, but it was just kind of, there were some really cool things that we learned uh, in that process. So, you know, don't, don't discount laminate for a kitchen. Yeah, it's it it's not your sure. it's yeah. not the laminate of olden days. Yeah. But yeah, that was a whole other thing. Just really investigating different products and different materials that are manufactured differently or shipped differently or, you know, and kind of like, you know, with Norwalk, Norwalk, we were working very closely with Norwalk Furniture, and they have a whole series of cushions, as most custom manufacturers do, and they were having trouble at their factories for one particular kind of cushion. So if we switched cushions, we could cut our lead times by a solid six weeks or whatever it was at the time, I don't remember. And so a lot of a lot of conversations like that, that we, that yeah. was a learning experience, really. Yeah, uh, you know, people say all the time, you can't just, you know, be complacent and Mm-mm. just do your day to day. We may not be in business. As a matter of fact, there's a few designers that we've talked to that are like, I'm just over this. I'm tired I'm of tapped out. Yeah, I'm tired of um, hounding furniture. I'm tired of damages. I'm tired of clients, you know, beating me up because they're not getting what they're supposed to do. And it's like, uh, yeah, it, it could be that way. But you have to do some of the, you have to do some of these things. Yeah. And For sure. so, yeah, I think we may have lost a few, but well, if, no. the, if the expectations of, of the client are not realistic up front, then it's not going to be a happy mm-hmm. partnership. So there's no point in moving forward. Yeah. yeah. You know, um, but back to the business side of things. Yes. So we did the addendum to our contract and, and that was just kind of a heads up for everybody. Like, look, and I think the biggest part of that was we used to do these big one day, two day installs, you know, big reveals, HGTV, like voila. And now we do two and three. Yeah. And unfortunately, the that's more expensive for the client. And that's just a conversation we have yeah. to have. There's yeah. nothing we can do about it. Well, the thing is, if you're ordering, you know, 100 items, yeah, and 75 of them are in, and you have to wait another eight weeks for the other 25%, rather than have that stuff sitting in the warehouse, we'd rather get it to you. But then that still means an additional install for the other the other parts so just once again navigating and giving you know people the option uh, and it all depends on the situation too you know are you moving into a house that you you need that furniture or can you wait you could use the stuff you know from the basement for now so we had several clients during covid that were new builds with no furniture they literally did not bring anything to the yeah. new house. So that was yeah. super stressful. Then we had another client who was having a huge built-in pool, whole outdoor area done, and wanted to get her outdoor furniture ordered in time. They were going to have a graduation and whatever. And so we ordered all the furniture it was supposed to be in. Then we ordered it, it to, in January or something. And it was supposed to be in, in March. She was, was crazy organizing yeah, on yeah, top of it. Yeah. yeah. And then March came and went. So so here we are now, and I had to tell her that it's getting delayed. And she's like, well, that's okay, because the pool people are delayed. So here we are now in September. Mm-hmm. Okay, they were thinking the pool was going to be done in May. The pool is still not done. And the, and furniture, the furniture's the furniture not even here. Not in. So I was feeling like, oh, my God, they're going to have this pool, and they're not going to have it. And she's like, don't worry about it. Cause, so we're not the only ones. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but... Um, along the business side of things, one thing that we did have to have a conversation about, and as as the manufacturers did, you know, for a long time, the manufacturers absorbed the price increases that they were experiencing, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. uh, freight especially. And they tried. They, you know, they tried for materials. a while. They but did. But then after months and months, you just can't keep losing yeah. money. Yeah. And then they started just 
you know, passing on the the, the surcharges, yeah. which, you know. And so for us, we had the same situation with the multiple installs because the way that we charge is we we charge everything up front except for the delivery guys at the end, our time to install and our installer's time. But we just, there were some cases where we had two and three installs and we did not charge for our time yeah. for the stragglers. We charged for the big install. But if there was like three extra lamps that came yeah. or an extra rug that I mean, came, we're not gonna nickel and we dime did not people. nickel and I dime. Mean, but it was really time consuming on our part yeah. to be running all over Atlanta. It's a very big and city. And I remember us talking to other designers yeah. saying, oh no, we, we charge for that. It's not our fault. But I don't know. I do, we just didn't feel right doing that. Yeah, I yeah. I, I think they had to pay for the delivery guys and, and wait. And I don't know. We all just had to kind of meet in the middle but that was yeah. that was one thing that yeah. we had to do and you know we also had to change kind of the way we lay out our billing too you know we we wanted to show the surcharges and show the extra things that the manufacturers were putting onto us so that it didn't make us look bad mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. so we kind of showed all of that on on all of our invoices so it was a lot of yeah changing and but i have to say i I can sit here and say, I, feel, I don't think that we had one upset no. client no. the entire uh, time. Yeah. Like I said, just communicate. Yeah. Just call and say, we've checked on this and it's going to be this. And people were very understanding, but just don't ghost people. Yeah. If, if you don't, you know, we're not going to shy away from bad news. We're going to give it to you because it's, it's inevitably mm -hmm. it is what it is. Mm -hmm. um, and so well, we had really no control over so much of it, but at least if we could communicate it. And then, you know, beat up the rep if we had to. <laughs> which we did. And and they came through for us, which was super nice. Mm -hmm. We yeah. had a few that yeah. that really answered a cell phone on a, on a Saturday afternoon and, yeah. and came through for us. So um, I and it's not over yet. I mean, that's no. the thing. We're September of 2022 and we are far from over. Yeah. We are still looking at lead times anywhere from four to to 25 weeks. And it's across the board in all different ways. We're still looking at inventories depleting quickly. We're still looking at shipping surcharges. Yeah. Uh, it's and I don't think I think we'll be well into 2023 yeah. before we have a reprieve. Yeah. There's no back to normal. Right. Mm -mm. right. There's it's mm -mm. not nor not normal quite yet. Yeah. Um, all right. So before we get to the quotes, yes. there's some very exciting news. Which okay. I don't think we've even mentioned it on the podcast. I know we haven't. So we. We're nominated for an HGTV Design Award for Living Large in Small Spaces. There's about eight categories. It's designer for Designer of the Year. Yeah. And so um, Kelly's Lake House is in the running. If you go on to, oh, let's see, is it just, I don't know. See, Let me see pull it up. It's HGTV.com. If you just search Designer of the Year, it'll come up all the categories. Yeah. yeah. And when you pull up, Look for the yellow door. Large spaces and then made smaller. What I love or about smaller spaces yeah. made larger. <laughs> what I love about this contest and what I hate about a lot of contests is this one you can just vote. You don't have to give your email address. It takes literally a second to press the mm -hmm. button and vote. So if you can do that for us, that would be so great. Because we, uh, I think the voting ends at like September 27th. Seventh. So something. when this and comes you can, out, you have one day. You got to do it the day you listen to this. <laughs> yeah. And you, you can do it every day if yeah. you're so yeah. inclined. But anyway. Yeah. All right. So the other thing is mm -hmm. our High Point Insiders Tour that we are guiding 15 newbies through market for the fall in October is almost full. Yep. We've got two spots left. So if you are listening and you have not been to market in at least four markets or you knew and you need us to hold your hand and show you how to navigate the craziness of High Point, go on to highpointmarket.org and sign up for the Insiders Tour and you have to pick us and... Luba, you have, you have to pick is us. Is in charge. You have to pick us, yeah. and Luba's in charge, and she will contact you, and you got to fill out an application, all that goodness. Yes. So, okay. Quotes. Yes, I got to do the funny one because it's me, yeah. a thousand percent. Mm -hmm. Okay, me writing an email. I'm using an exclamation point, so you know I'm friendly and excited. But now I'm using a period, so that you know I'm not crazy. Here's another sentence with a period as a buffer, proving my normalness. Thank you so much! Exclamation point. 
That is me all day long. That's what my therapist says on Instagram. I love their account. They they have the funniest they have quotes. The funniest, funniest quotes. Yep. Okay, so for the serious one, it's not the strongest of the species that survives, nor the most intelligent. It's the one that is most adaptable to change. And that's Charles Darwin. And that's just everything we talked about today. Yep. It totally is. You have to keep it's it's exhausting, really, but you just but have it's to keep fun. You just it have keeps keep the changing. adrenaline going. Yes. It does. We just attended the podcast movement conference in Dallas last week. And you know, whenever you go to any of these events, um, and it, it's related to your business, it's all the same. You have to keep going. Adapting, Adapting moving, changing. changing. Yeah. 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 Learning, growing. So we're putting our podcast on video after four years. We are going, you will be able to see us live when we record. Well, not live. You'll see the video of us recording on YouTube yeah. uh, every week. So stay tuned. We're, we're setting that all up. We got to, you know, buy all the equipment and do what we have to do. But yeah, people yep, can yep. see our smiling faces as we chat. All right, everybody. Well, thanks again to Wexel Art. We love you guys, and you are a big part of our project. So thank you for sponsoring this podcast. And we really would love it if you guys would share, and please add Inside Design to your podcast library so you can keep up with all the industry goodness that we share. Yes. All right. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Join Joanne and Kelly weekly for a lively conversation about trends, travels to industry events, current design projects, the good, the bad, and the ugly, do's and don'ts, product recommendations, and more. Be sure to follow the fun on Facebook. They're on Instagram, at Kandrak Cole. And of course, you've got to visit them online at kandrak-cole.com for more information.